Hey everyone, this is Zach with 8020 Media here today with a video on the BMW N20 versus B48 engines, which is better. The BMW N20 and B48 engines are the primary BMW engines to have powered 2012 through present 18i, 20i, 25i, 28i, and 30i models. So the BMW N20 was in production from 2011 until 2017, and then the B48 succeeded the N20 and began production in 2014 and remains in production to this very day and throughout at least 2025. While there is some overlap in the N20 and B48 production times, it was mostly the N20 that powered the bulk of these vehicles through 2016, and the B48 really primarily took over in 2017, even though it began production a few years earlier than that. It was really for a couple mini models and very limited models up until again roughly 2017 when the B48 then became the primary engine. The BMW B48 and N20 share quite a bit in common, especially a lot of their basic design and specs look very similar between the two engines. They are both two liter inline four turbocharged direct injected engines. They share the same double overhead cam design with double Vanos and Valvetronic, so very similar designs there overall. However, despite all of these similarities, the N20 and B48 actually aren't directly related rather than the B48 being designed off of the BMW N20 engine. It's actually a part of BMW's modular B-series engine family, so the B48 is actually much more closely related to its larger inline six B58 brother. Just something to point out there that while these engines do share a lot of similar specs, there were major design changes and the B-series engine family was a totally new design for BMW engines. With that being said, when BMW designed the B-Series modular engines, a couple of the big changes that they made were moving from open deck blocks, which are ideal for cooling, but a little bit weaker, especially for boosted applications and aftermarket mods. So BMW with the B-Series engines moved to closed deck blocks and also moved from air to air intercoolers to an air to water intercooler design. And so those are two of the major differences between the N20 and B48. Now, moving on to performance, the N20 N20 and B48 make nearly identical horsepower and torque. The lower ends of the range are actually almost identical with the B48 only having an advantage of about seven pound feet of torque. However, looking at the more powerful variants of these engines, the B48 does hold an advantage of 15 horsepower and 37 foot pounds of torque. So a little bit of an advantage on paper there for the BMW B48. One thing to mention, there actually is a more powerful variant of the B48. Found in 35i models and that delivers even more power and torque but I'm kind of excluding that from this video simply because that variant of the B48 is very different. It has a number of considerable updates to support the additional power including a larger turbocharger, updated crankshaft design, revised intake tract, and a number of other updates. So again an advantage for the B48 on paper of about 15 horsepower and 37 foot-pounds of torque. However looking at it in the real world the N20 and B48 actually deliver nearly identical performance, and if anything, the N20 actually has a slight advantage. If you look at similar models powered by the B48 versus the N20, it's not uncommon to see some of the N20 vehicles being roughly one or two tenths of a second quicker to 60 miles an hour as well as through the quarter mile, and part of that boils down to the fact that the newer models featuring the BMW B48 engine tend to be a little bit heavier a little bit bigger, and that's a disadvantage when it comes to acceleration, especially looking at things like zero to 60 and quarter mile times. Despite the fact that the N20 might actually have a slight advantage in the real world, it is close enough to say that ultimately the N20 and B48 deliver basically identical performance. A difference in a couple tenths of a second really just boils down to the day, the driving conditions, the driving
driver behind the wheel, etc. And so these cars are close enough that the N20 versus B48 are basically the exact same. When it comes to aftermarket performance, we've got a similar trend here. Don't want to sound like a broken record necessarily, but again, these cars are very close and that applies to aftermarket potential with tuning and bolt-ons as well. With basic bolt-on mods and tuning, both of these engines will end up in the same ballpark of roughly 275 to 300 wheel horsepower and roughly 300 to 325 wheel torque. So very similar there. The B48 is actually going to be a little bit easier and cheaper to get to those power levels. The air to water intercooler system is very efficient. No need to upgrade that. Certainly don't recommend that for a stock turbo B48. However, on the N20 with the air to air intercooler, we would certainly recommend upgrading that intercooler if you're planning to add all the bolt-ons and tuning. And so one less modification when we're talking about this for the B48 to achieve those power numbers. And also another advantage for the B48 is it is a stronger engine design with its closed deck block. It also has these stronger internals and is generally the more capable engine. So the upper limits of the B48 fall closer to about 400 to 425 wheel horsepower, whereas the N20 really reaches its upper limits at around 350 wheel horsepower. And additionally, the B48, especially the B48TU, the updated variants have better fueling systems than the N20. So if you're looking at taking things further with an upgraded turbocharger, the B48 is going to be the easier engine to do that with. It's capable of safely handling a little bit more power and again has the better fueling system. And so it makes it all that much easier and and cheaper to build the B48 if you're really looking to take one of these engines to 350, 400 plus wheel horsepower. Moving on to our next topic for the N20 versus B48, we have reliability. Reliability is going to be very similar between these two engines, but the B48 does have a slight advantage here. So looking at a couple common problems for each of these engines, the N20 has some known issues with the timing chain, specifically the timing chain guides. Outside of that, it's prone to a lot of the normal or typical BMW problems like cooling leaks or cooling system issues and oil leaks. So the valve cover gasket, oil pan gasket, oil filter housing gasket, coolant hoses, and water pump are all among a couple common things in those areas to look out for on the N20. Looking at the B48, two of the more common problems are issues with the oil filter housing. So the oil filter housing is known to crack on the B48, especially in that ballpark of about 60,000 to 100,000 miles. And then there is also a very common issue with the cylinder head ventilation lines. And this is something BMW actually addressed in a 2022 technical service bulletin addressing issues with this line specifically. And so that is certainly one of the most common issues with the B48. Outside of that, the B48 is an incredibly reliable reliable engine. As they continue getting older and older, it's likely we'll see more of the kind of, again, typical BMW issues like cooling system problems and oil leaks. However, a lot of these components on the B48, things like the valve cover gasket and water pumps, have shown to be a big improvement over some older engines, including the likes of the N20, N55, N54, etc. Again, while this engine ages, some of those problems will become more common, but certainly still an improvement over some older BMW engines. The B48 is the newer engine, and so it's going to be a little more reliable naturally. Being newer, it has less age-related problems. Things like gaskets, O-ring seals, hoses simply degrade and wear down with age and mileage. So the newer B48 is going to have the advantage in the sense that it's the newer engine and more likely to have lower mileage compared to the N20. Final two subjects to be super quick on here are price and fuel economy. Starting with fuel economy, the B48 being the newer engine, it does have more advanced technology aimed at improving fuel economy and emissions, and so it does hold the advantage there. The B48, when looking at similar models, is going to do about two miles per gallon combined, better than the N20, so nothing significant. Both of these are very fuel efficient engines and deliver great fuel economy, notably seeing oftentimes 35 plus miles per gallon on the freeway, but that slight advantage for the B48 can really add up in the longer term at the pump when you're filling these engines up over the course of years and years and tens of thousands of miles. And then price is where the N20 is finally going to have an advantage of its own, with the N20 being the older engine dating back to 
2012, it's going to be easier to find cheaper, more affordable N20s compared to the B48, which really wasn't a predominant engine until 2017 and onwards. So with them being newer, they are going to be more expensive. Now, of course, the price gap is pretty close. If you look at something like, say, a 2017 N20 versus a 2018 B48, the prices are going to be close. But again, the N20 is still going to have that slight advantage, assuming you're looking at cars with similar mileage, similar condition, history, etc. So in summary, for the N20 and B48, there really isn't a perfect answer here. Both the N20 and B48 can be excellent engines that deliver a good balance of performance, reliability, and efficiency. And that really depends on your personal preferences and budget when shopping for one of these engines. Again, the B48 has a slight advantage in a few areas. It makes a bit more power from the factory, but that doesn't translate into any quicker or it being any faster in the real world. However, the B48 does hold an advantage for aftermarket potential, especially if you're looking to push things further than just basic bolt-ons. The stronger closed deck block and internal certainly favor the B48, as well as its more advanced and more capable fueling system. And then when it comes to reliability, again, these are both reliable engines, especially by BMW standards. However, BMW really did make a large stride in the right direction when it came to the B-series engines. So ultimately, looking at the eras that these engines came out, the N20 came out during a time where BMW was still struggling with reliability a little bit more, and they really figured it out with these B-series engines. Now, for the time the N20 came out, it is a very reliable engine, but I'd still put my faith in the B48 as being the more reliable engine, not only because it's newer, but it is a better engine design and something that BMW really worked on improving reliability. Anyway, guys, that wraps up our video for today. If you appreciated the content, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out the description for more. Thanks, everyone.